Good morning, Winter Garden. Welcome to worship on this Mother's Day, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and those who serve as mothers and love one another as mothers. We're so glad that you're all able to join us in person and online. If you are worshiping in the sanctuary today, please sign the black pad that's at the end of your pew. Sign it for yourself and for your children. If you have had a change of contact information or you have prayer requests, please make a note of this on the page. Don't forget, we have boxes at each door for dropping off your gifts, ties, and offerings. We also ask that you try to keep a pew in between you and the next group of worshipers. Oh, we want to send a special thanks to Catherine Austin and Brenda McLeod. That's wonderful. Thank you. Oh. Thank myself. Um, so I have abandoned Brenda. She's in the nursery. Um, we have worked hard to reopen the nursery for our zero to three-year-old uh, children. And you may ask an usher for directions to the nursery if you have a small child or a spouse that you don't want to sit with. <laughs> so if you're worshiping from home, send us your prayer request via our Facebook Messenger app. And we ask that while you're watching at home, please press share. A few announcements today. We would like to thank all of our prayer volunteers who helped make this year's National Day of Prayer a success. Let's give them a round of applause. Yay. There will be an orientation meeting about the upcoming week of service on Wednesday, May 19th at 7 p.m. following the classes. Now, they really need adults to work alongside the youth. That week of service will happen at the end of July, so please plan to come to that meeting and prepare to help serve our community by helping to lead the youth. We want to thank you all for continuing to support our church with your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings. There are a number, way, number of ways to give, online at the website, by text, by mail, or give it to me. That's supposed to be funny because my dad's the business manager. Okay, um, you guys got to work on your uh, on your jokes now. Che treasurer, yes. Checks should be made payable to the First United Methodist Church of Winter Garden, and you can do this at any time during the service or any time during the week. Now we have a short Mother's Day video for you all this morning, so let's enjoy. Motherhood plays an important role in the Bible. It binds the beginning and the end. These stories offer us a glimpse into the heart of God. And so we start at the beginning. Taken from the side of Adam, gifted with bringing forth life, the first woman was named Eve because she was the mother of all living. But she was also a mother in her own right, the first of many mothers to come. Though Sarah's womb was closed, God promised nations and kings would come from her. Ten years pass, and motherhood seems as impossible as the day it was promised. But the Lord is faithful to keep his promises, and Sarah bore a son who made her laugh. Leah was the firstborn, overlooked by her husband Jacob, who gave his heart to her younger sister. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. Despite Jacob's disdain, she found her motherhood in the Lord. When Pharaoh became angry at the fruitfulness of the Hebrews, Jochebed sacrificed her motherhood for the sake of her son. When Pharaoh's daughter saw the child, she had compassion on him. Because of Jochebed's sacrificial motherhood, the Israelites found freedom. Naomi was a mother who experienced the loss of her sons, yet she gained a daughter in Ruth who declared, For where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God, my God. Naomi and Ruth became family by faith. Mary, a virgin and not yet married, was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. The motherhood of this blessed woman was more than the continuation of a family name, but a means for God to bring a savior into the world. 
to save his people from their sins. From the garden to the cross, there have always been mothers. These women paved the way for all women, representing the full spectrum of the ways one could be called mom. Whether a mother in faith, mentorship, adoption, or by birth, you play an important role in the stories of generations to come. To all the Sarahs, Leahs, Jochebeds, and Naomis, Happy Mother's Day. That's a beautiful message. Now, please stand and join me in passing the peace. We are still using our um, ASL um, expression of passing the peace. So to review that, the sign for peace is to place your hands here together, and you're going to switch to the other side and then press downward and outward to mean calm. It's not safe, Rusty. It's calm. But it is safe, right? So that's your peace. <laughs> and then bring the fists together, knuckles together. And then extend your hand forward or to the side to someone special. And then to say, um, and also with you, you come back and forth with your thumb and pinky. So let's try that to together. So we have peace, be with you, and also with you. All right, wonderful. Now, we remain standing um, for, yeah, I know, it's so much exercise. You are so used to being at home online. We really hope for our uh, worshipers online that you are also standing and sitting, standing and sitting. So our first hymn is Faith of Our Mothers. Um, you're going to watch on the screens for the words. <laughs>
You may be seated. We thank our vocalists and musicians. And now I ask that you join me in our opening prayer. Please bow your heads. Gracious God, we come to you this day. For many, there is a celebration of Mother's Day and all that our mothers have given to us and taught us. But for some, these memories are too painful. Remind us that your blessings are poured out in many ways, through many people. Give us the confident faith that reaches beyond our own lives to help others. Give us hearts of love that in all places and times we may be a witness to the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning's first scripture is from Proverbs 31, verses 25 through 27, reading from the Living Bible. She is a woman of strength and dignity and has no fear of old age. When she speaks, her words are wise, and kindness is the rule for everything she says. She watches carefully all that goes on throughout her household and is never lazy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is good to see you. We thank you for singing along through your mask. That's not an easy thing to do. Uh, we want to thank you for uh, washing our, your hands and wearing your mask and keeping safe distances. Uh, we're still ad adhering to uh, Florida Conference, United Methodist Church guidelines for worship and, and for all of our work. We're delighted, though, that things continue to move along and to open up and that um, things are progressing. Um, as we work together to defeat this pandemic. We believe in the church that the Holy Spirit is stronger than the pandemic. Amen? Amen. And so we'll continue to sing our way through this and, and push our way through this. And, and here in the church, we'll transition our way through this. But I know, I know 16 years ago, uh, as I prepared to uh, come and be your pastor, I began praying for you uh, months in advance. I asked for a a uh, list of everybody in the church so I could pray, I could pray, I could pray. And then I got a few months into that and then they sent me a picture book. I call it the funny book, the funny pages. I got, I got the church directory. I got everybody's picture. So now I was praying by name and by picture. And wow, what a big, big, wonderful help that was. I have a difficult time praying with a mask on, I'll admit that, but I also found it enlightening back, way back when. It was, it was good to move from just praying for, for names to praying for, for faces and uh, how, how I enjoyed that. But I also know at that same time, the church lay leader made this, 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 uh, this appeal in April and May of that year for a concerted effort in our giving. So if I were to read the, the, the uh, financial report for the last two weeks, which I just looked at it, I know that our giving this week and next week and every week is important and integral to the operation of the church. As I like to say, not only should we always be thanking our church treasurer, Ken White, uh, I don't like to come to church and take nominations. Is there anyone who would like to be the church treasurer? Anyone here want to be a church treasurer? for the Great Recession? Anyone here want to be the treasurer during the pandemic? All those in favor say aye. All those in favor of Ken White say aye. Aye. All those opposed like sign and Ken it is so ordered. That's how the bishop conducts his business or her business. So uh, we come to this time of, of prayer this morning and I need to share some uh, parish notices, some pastoral information. Uh, first, to all of our college graduates, to Bailey Blaylock and Kelsey Aaron, and to um, Rob Lowell Honeycutt, uh, Lowell and Jackie's grandson, who graduated Friday night from Samford, Alabama Law School. Now, if you live in Alabama long enough, you don't have to say Alabama. Okay, so congratulations, uh, Lowell and Jackie. 
uh, and, and to young Rob. And then our high school graduates, uh, Courtney Aaron, her cousin Henry Sines, <laughs> brothers Tavis and Gavin Goldwire, and the United Methodist women graciously will recognize them with Pastor Nada in a breakfast next Sunday morning. So women, United Methodist women, we, we thank you. We want to remember to be in, in, in prayer for our Sunday school classes, our child care needs, as Catherine has shared, our Blaze youth, our recruiting for adult volunteers and teenage volunteers for Vacation Bible School. Without our adults and without our teenagers, we have no Bible school. Uh, we're like the old time in the Methodist Church this, this summer. Why do I say that? We're doing not one, but two weeks of Vacation Bible School. So don't blink, those two weeks will go by fast, but we need volunteers for that. To, uh, let me think, from the back pew, Jonathan Prescott had a birthday yesterday. Congratulations, Jonathan, on being 29. And um, from further down the pew here, our caring table, dinner church, Methodist men's leader, John Zachariah, is 49 today. John, congratulations. And um, it's only a number. And get this, we need volunteers to help us lock up the church at night. How do I know that? I came in this morning, and the gate and the lock that I had unlocked yesterday, bam, they were still unlocked. Okay, a lot of gates, a lot of locks. We need a lot of eyes and ears to listen and, and help us lock up. If you can help us do that at night, please see myself or you could email Ken White. Uh, we also need, I need a volunteer to help carry out the church signs, the SIG and S's, to Plant Street. There are people who have found our church because of our signs on Plant Street. Get that. Isn't that cool? But they've got to be carried out there and brought back in. You, you can use your wagon, you can use your your car, you can use your truck, you can, you, you can carry them in person, but I don't recommend that. So we need, the, need those volunteer helps uh, coming up in, in what will end up being a big volunteer week. And uh, I will look forward to seeing many of you Saturday. I understand there's going to be a rally Saturday. So uh, I thank you, and I thank the Aloha Committee, Aloha, uh, in advance for that. So we need to be in prayer, as I've got a special prayer for Mother's Day. We need to be in prayer for these moms, for Sue Norton, who's in ICU, for Jackie Browder, who's at Health Central with pneumonia, for Barbara Stewart, following her surgery this week. We want to be in prayer for our new pastor, Melissa Stump, and her husband, David, and, and their family as they are, are making the transition to come and be with us. They'll make the move from Lakeland here to uh, Winter Garden at the end of June. Uh, pastor Melissa will be with you on July the 4th, and on that Sunday you're going to practice your, your church hospitality, okay? Do we need to practice today? Okay, I introduce to you the Reverend Melissa Stump. Okay, one big difference. Most of you have not been to Sunday school this morning, so you have enough energy to, when, we, when you do that on July the 4th. Stand up, okay? All right. And, and uh, if you've never moved, yourself, moved your family into somebody else's house and had to meet 500 new people you never knew before, there's an art to it. So let's, let's help her, let's help David with that, with that heart. Would you bow with me and may we pray together? Oh, loving God, we thank you that you love us as a nurturing parent. We thank you for Pastor Nada and her message today on, on Mother's Day. We thank you for her passion and her creativity for sharing the gospel. We thank you for our ablaze youth for Nada's strong interest in missions and for the mission of Jesus Christ wherever it may be. 
We pray for these loved ones and dear friends, for Barbara Stewart, for Sue Norton, for Jackie Browder. Lord, we uplift them each and every day. We uplift them now. We pray for Sue and her family and the loss of her sister, Lee Owens. We pray for Joyce Crouch's nephew who passed away, Jim Rouse. We pray for Richard Hudson and the loss of his brother, Carl. Lord, we pray. We pray today for our mothers everywhere. We pray for young mothers and expectant mothers and new mothers. We pray for the joy of motherhood and the responsibilities for young women today. Guide, comfort, and care for our young mothers. We pray for those who brought us into the world and those who have struggled as mothers. We pray for their healing and for their wholeness. We pray for mothers who have battled illness, coronavirus, COVID-19, racism, sexism, and ageism. For mothers who have battled the loss of jobs, a child or a parent. We pray for our mothers who have worked while schooling their children and keeping them safe at home and in the workplace. Lord, we pray for mothers today who struggle with hassles and hardships and hang-ups, for those who are in need of your divine hope. Dear Lord, we pray for those with compulsions and addictions that recovery, release, and restoration would be theirs. Lord, you are a God of redemption and recovery and salvation. We thank you that you love us. We thank you for the work of honoring mothers that began with Anna Jarvis so many years ago in the Methodist Church. We thank of our mothers and grandmothers who lead us at home and in the marketplace and at the altar rail. We thank you for those who have loved us unselfishly, unconditionally. Today, O oh Lord, we thank you especially for our mothers in the faith. We thank you for those who have been our teachers, <clears throat> those who have been our servant leaders and our spiritual mothers. We thank you for those who have balanced the books and baked the cakes and cooked the cas casseroles and led the classes, prayed the prayers, attended the meetings, opened your word to us, and have led us as pastors. Lord Jesus, we thank you today for your great affirmation and the importance you have placed on women in ministry. We thank you for our mothers and grandmothers in the faith here at First United Methodist Church. We thank you for those who have taught us. We thank you for those for whom we have received the faith. We thank you for these wonderful women and sisters in the faith. We thank you for those who have led us in faith and hope and, and love. Oh God, we pray in remembrance of our mothers who are in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for their imprint on our lives, their sacrifices, and their love. Oh Lord, we praise you and we thank you for our mothers on earth and our mothers in heaven. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Please join me in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, and you'll find this on page 881 of your hymnal. So I have it on a piece of paper, but I'm also holding my hymnal, and I'm just really, um, I just want to share with you what that feels like. It feels very good, and it's also on the screens. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I would think I would know it has like a three second delay, right? So, um, can the kids come on down? I've got a bag I need you to help me go through. Okay? Anybody? <laughs> Nava's going to make Ian come. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. You always get voluntold for all kinds of good stuff, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, I know you've said, I love you to your mom today, haven't you? Yeah, because that should have been the first thing you did today before you had your coffee. Before everything, you should have said, I love you, Mom, because today's her day. We only get one, so we got to make the most of it. All right, so um, we were talking about some different things, and I found a scripture in 1 John, and it's chapter 4, verse 12. And it says, we can't ever see God. But when he lives in us, then he is shown through us, and his love shines through us to others. So we were talking at the first service. What are some ways, or who, today, hint, hint, who today do you think can show us what God looks like? Mom, mom, well, maybe mom. You know, the one that told you to come up here, Ian, come on. <laughs> yeah, that was the one. So what are some of the things that, you're, that you love about your mom? Well, what I like about her is that she makes me food, she takes care of me, and she bothers me a lot. She bothers you a lot. <laughs> yes, because that is our mission. If we can't embarrass our children, why have them? Really? Come on, let's be realistic. Now, the young lady at the first service said that she loves her mom because she lets her have treats after dinner. I commented as a grandmother, it's treats before dinner. But um, either way, treats are always good. Now, but I really think, um, and tell me if you're with this, that one of the way that mom shows us how much she loves us is all the stuff she carries for us, right? Mom carries all kinds. I've seen the stuff your mom carries for you, Ian. okay? She's pulling out iPads, and she's pulling out phones, and she's pulling out guys, and what? Laptops, Laptops Legos, you name it. It's in the bag. So I thought it would be kind of fun to kind of get an idea of what might be in mom's purse. Now, when my two sons were younger, um, a purse was not big enough. I carried a backpack. I'm sure a lot of us are there. You know, you just kind of segued right from the diaper bag into the backpack. Um, it's just, there was stuff. There's always stuff. So let's take a look here to see what I might have in this bag. So um, let's see. Oh, my gosh. We, we do live in Florida. So we've got the sunscreen. That's an important thing to have. Um, let's see. What else do we have in here? Ian, are you hungry? I probably have snacks in here um, somewhere because they always fall to the bottom, don't they? Oh, look at that. I've got um, goldfish. There you go. Got to have those. And then after we have snacks, gum. Gum's important. Let's see. What else do we have in here? A towel. All right. How many people carry a towel with them? Yes. Good hitchhikers of the galaxy. We carry towels everywhere. Uh, uh, extra masks. Yeah. These days, always extra masks. We got to have them, don't we? What else is in here? Um, yeah, I stole this from Paisley Toys because sometimes you just got to have something. And if the toy doesn't work, um, oh, yeah, a book, the foot book, because she can read that one. This was actually the first book that Paisley read to us. It was very good. That was a couple years ago, but you got to love Dr. Seuss. Let's see, what else is in here? Oh, yeah, um, first aid kit. Yeah, we definitely need the first aid kit because, um, yeah, we tend to get scrapes and cuts and bruises. And when it gets really bad, check this out. 
ace bandage and another mask because you never really know. But um, there's, there's, oh my gosh, there's more stuff. But, you know, the one thing, what do you think that is, Ian? It's a Bible. Why do you think mom would carry a Bible in her purse? To learn more about God. Yeah, that, that's actually true. And sometimes it's not a physical Bible. It might be on the phone, which is probably a little bit lighter than carrying this one. But there's a lot of really good things in here that will help us mothers as we teach our kids about God, which is a good thing. But it's also really good for us because, you know, sometimes we have issues too, and it's always good to have this book to turn to. But one of the most important things that I think the Bible does for mom is that it reminds her that even though she has all this stuff that she's carrying, she always has God who's carrying her burdens for her. And that's an important thing to remember. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for my mom. Thank you for taking care of her for supporting her and to help her carry her burdens as well as mine. Amen. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. I am so honored and blessed to be able to share with you on this very special morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the mommies out there and out there online. May you be blessed and may you know that your life in ministry literally is a blessing to all of us. Thank you and we love you. Today is a day that is traditionally focused on women. However, today, I don't want to just limit ourselves to women or biological mothers. Today, I want to focus on nurturers. You see, according to Hallmark, moms are supposed to be this or that. But what about those of you who find it hard to find a Hallmark card that describes your mother? What if not everyone has that kind of mother? What if some of you never even knew your mother? What if some of you were raised, cared for, and loved by someone other than your mother? What if your mother is no longer here with us? What if you were unable or chose not to be a mother? This can be a difficult day. Take it for, from someone who was single till they were 38, and Mother's Day was kind of awkward, as people always wondered, so when are you going to be a mother? But there are not enough days in the year, and I have to take time to do this, to thank and express how much we love those moms out there that have done and been so much for us. So I have to start with my mommy. And I know ladies who are wearing hats, you were supposed to wear something honoring your mom, but my mom never wore a hat. Um, I, she's from a different time. And as a matter of fact, she never wore like jewelry or anything. So mom, today I'm wearing your jeans with a G. I hope I'm wearing them well. Mom, I wanna thank you for physically taking care of my delicate physical condition as a child and my challenging disposition as I grew up, which I was. I know you don't believe it, but I was a doozy. For loving and putting up with dad and this spoiled brat who was an only child until I was nine and was invaded by two cute little stinkers that I love very much, my brothers right there, my sisters in Puerto Rico. I was a handful of people and you were so very young. But thank you, mom. I love you and happy Mother's Day. 
to all of you moms that have endured the challenges of 2020 and 2021, you deserve an extra round of applause. So let's give it to the moms. Some of you worked, studied, helped your kids with virtual school at home, put up with them and your husband during quarantine nonstop, all day and all night. It was intense for all of us. And so I thank you moms who survived this very special time in history. Today, I also wanna thank all of you who decided, stepped up and stepped in, assumed the position, the responsibility, and the challenge of nurturing someone else as a mother would. Your choice to nurture and care for others is also a reason for celebration and gratitude, so thank you. So let's talk about nurture. Let's talk about nurture the noun and nurture the verb. Nurture the noun, according to lexico.com, is the process of caring for and encouraging the growth and development of someone or something. Nurture the verb is to care for and encourage the growth and development of. Today, I want to talk about the God who cares, the nurturer. Throughout scripture, we see glimpses of God nurturing and caring for his people. Yes, many times there is a focus on a strict, just, righteous image of God. But time after time, we see that compassionate, forgiving, and tender God too. Our Father God loves us like a mother loves. In Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, we see sacrificial love leading and guiding forgiveness and acceptance that can only flow from a nurturing heart. He is the Father that sets the limits, but also forgives the offense. He is the Father that disciplines, but also heals our wounds. Let's talk about some of the qualities of a nurturer. Now, I have a 10-year-old son, as you saw, the one that went up here. And those of you who are moms in the digital age, you know, with memes and YouTube and video games and oh my goodness, some of you uh, have these adolescents that just love repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again. And it's kind of annoying, and he has this little song that he randomly sings around the house. And uh, it's kind of annoying, but it's kind of cute. And so I'm gonna subject you to it, because if you're not a mom of this generation, you have no idea of how not only the children themselves, but the things that they watch and subject you to are truly annoying. So just to give you a glimpse of what he listens to and makes me listen to and then sings around the house, Here's a little meme video for you. Mommy, mommy, I hurt my toe. Can you make it better? I want to know. How about Band-Aid? Oh, no, I hate those things. Disinfectant spray. Oh, no, it always stings. If you want to let me know what you fix, you my big toe. It's mommy's kiss. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. Now, some of you know the original song to this. But just imagine hearing that over and over again, and then him singing it to you with the little voice. It's just like, yes, you're singing about my kiss, how precious, now stop. <laughs> but this song holds a lot of truth to it. In my house, um, we're not big on meds. Uh, we tough it out. We ride the fever, we walk it off, we dust off the dirt, we wipe away the blood, and take deep breaths, and carry on. That is just the way we roll. Sorry, Dr. Kappelman. You'll probably never see him. However, 
there is one, th one thing that we still do. We do acknowledge the pain. And if Ian gets hurt, he still, to this day, asks for a kiss wherever he got hurt. Sometimes it's the bottom of his foot. Ew. But we medicate it, no matter where it is. When I'm hurt, and this is really cute, or have a fever or I'm sick, he'll come up to me and he'll give me a kiss because that's the way we medicate in our house. Of course, if it's bandage worthy, I will bind it and I'll take care of it. A nurturer acknowledges the hurt or the pain and then tries to do something about it. Fortunately, our God is a nurturer and he stands by ready and willing to work on our hurts and our pains. In Psalm 147, verse 3, it says, He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Our God is a compassionate God. A nurturer is also aware of our sadness and our struggles, not just our external ouchies, but when there are things that are deeper within, a nurturer consoles and comforts. As adults, it can be hard to find a safe place to really express our sadness, frustration, or pain. Mommies, we all know that the bathroom is more than just a place to take care of certain things. A lot of times it's the place we can run to to hide, even though their fingers are under the door and we can see their shadows. <laughs> a lot of times it's a place where we can go to cry and just close the door, take a minute, and come back as if nothing had happened and face the day. It might be a little hard for my 10-year-old, now that he's kind of thinking he's cool, to cry in front of his buddies. But he knows that he can run into my arms and let it all out and do the ugly cry when he's surrounded by my arms. And I won't judge him. I will be there. And eventually I will do all I can to wipe away those tears. That is what a nurturer does and that is what god does a lot of people think about that image of god wiping away our tears in the book of revelations but it's actually found in isaiah as well isaiah 25 8 it says the sovereign lord will wipe away all tears and that's what a nurturer does so let me make a public confession Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I run around a lot. My car has clear evidence of where a lot of the eating takes place in my family. <laughs> it's bad, I know, don't judge. Ian and I eat out a lot, or rather eat in the car a lot, and we get a lot of delivery. Thank you, Domino's, for building that new Domino's right in front of Tucker Oaks. And I really do admire you moms out there who are homeschooling, four kids, and you plan your meals, and you prepare your meals a week ahead, and you write a menu. I am just not that person. It's just two of us, and we do what we can. But making sure he's fed is important to me. Not only fed with food, but with encouragement and with affection. That is what nurturers do. They feed the body, they feed the mind, they feed the soul, they express care and tenderness physically as well. Now, when I was younger, I tell you, I was a handful. And my parents never gave up. I was so, they used to call me lemon drop because I was so bitter. <laughs> and. <laughs> My father never gave up. I mean, to the point where it's probably not like 
politically correct nowadays, but he would hug me regardless of my attitude. He'd be like, I'm so sorry, but I love you anyways. You can be as bitter as you want, but I'm still gonna love you. And he'd kiss me and I'd be like, oh, I'm melting, I'm melting, stop, you. But they never gave up. They continuously fed me and expressed their care and their tenderness physically, as well as with words and their care. Now we all need food, especially at this service. It's like lunch is soon. We all also need to feel close to and loved by someone. I don't care how much of an, a rebellious, anti-love teenager you are, we deep down all need someone that'll make us feel loved and accepted. And that is what God does with his people. Even when we're like, God, I don't wanna hear about you, I don't wanna know about you, why did you allow this to happen? Ew! He still keeps on loving us and expressing that love. He's like a good shepherd, like a good shepherd, God always there. <laughs> Amazing. You see, he's a good shepherd in that he has mighty arms to protect and to care for and to lift up. But those same mighty arms are also his tender arms to express love. That stained glass window back there always reminds me of our tender loving God. Isaiah 40, 11 says this, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. You know, like that grandma that always puts tons of food in front of you, or like Joan in the office. <laughs> he will carry the lambs in his arms and holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. That is our compassionate, loving God, a nurturer. When my son needs something, you better be sure that I'm going to do all I can to make it happen. That is what a nurturer does. We take care of and we provide. Moms, you have that gift of making it happen. That is what our nurturing God does as well. In Philippians 4.19, this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his riches in glory, or his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. In Philippians 4.19, it tells us, and I've seen it time and time again. Oh, that Christmas when there wasn't quite enough, mom makes it happen. That special day when they needed to wear a certain thing, mom makes it happen. Now, as a 10-year-old, there are very few things I expect from my son. Truth be told. Basic things, that's what I expect from him. I expect obedience, cooperation, consideration, and respect. I'm not that iron fist, obsessive, or super strict mom. A little obsessive, a little tiny bit strict, but not like really. I'm easygoing and go with the flow, with life and with my son. When those things aren't done though, when he doesn't fulfill what he's expected to fulfill. When a rule is broken, I get upset, unhappy, and there is a price to pay. After all, part of nurture is encouraging growth and development. And growth and development require discipline too. Ooh, we don't want to hear that. You don't just let things grow wild like weeds because that is what they will turn into in society, weeds. You prune, sometimes they hate it. You guide, sometimes they don't like it. And you help them grow and develop in the right direction. A nurturer does this as well. A nurturer will encourage growth. Discipline is part of growth, development, and maturity. Proverbs 3.12 is clear, saying that the Lord disciplines those whom he loves. Yet 
the nurturer does not just stay in the discipline part. When expectations are not met, when rules are broken, when there is a lack of respect or obedience, there are consequences, don't get me wrong. But then there is love. Thanks be to God for his nurture, discipline, and his abundant grace, compassion, and love. That is why his grace is so amazing. We don't deserve it. We keep messing up. We keep breaking the rules. We fall short. And yet he loves us anyway. That is what a nurturer does. Their love does not give up, even when we do not do what we're supposed to. Psalm 103, verses 8 through 10, says this, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. That sounds like a lot of moms out there and dads. Today we celebrate nurturers. Some of you are moms. Some of you are dads. Some of you are grandparents. Some of you are friends. Some of you are pastors. Some of you are teachers. Some of you are children caring for older parents. You help us grow. You care for us. You give yourselves and make sacrifices. You help us heal. You receive us with open arms when we mess up. You show us a glimpse of what God is and what God does, and you allow him to love us through you. And we are so thankful for each of you. Most of all, as we leave today, let us leave fully assured that there is one who cares for us, who will not leave us, divorce us, and who is there for us no matter what. Our God, our nurturer, and the lover of our souls. May we become nurturers in a world that is in such need of love, healing, and acceptance. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you at this time for all of those who have nurtured us throughout our lives. Whether they had a title, a name, or a family position or not, people who invested in us, sacrificed for us, and helped us along the way. Lord, right now I want to lift up to you all of those who are nurturers here, who are giving of themselves, who are trying, who are working hard to raise up young people, children. I pray that you would give them wisdom, guidance, and strength. I pray for those who are helping for grandparents, for aunts and uncles, who are standing beside and also being nurturers. Bless them, empower them, give them grace. Heavenly Father, I would ask if anyone here is feeling motherless or fatherless, that they would be confident and assured that they have one who loves them as their father and cares for them as a mother. We thank you. And we pray in the name of Jesus who saw his mother even at the last moment here on earth, on that cross. In that name of Jesus, amen and amen. <laughs>
Gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for these tithes and offerings and gifts. Let's keep our church strong going into the summer and in the months ahead that our stewardship would reflect our great love of you and of your church. Bless our givers and our giving alike, we pray and we ask. Call us to be cheerful givers, compassionate givers, caring givers, loving givers. We pray these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for our closing hymn, which is Count Your Blessings, and then for the benediction. <coughs> May we receive this benediction. O God of love and compassion and care, O God who has blessed us beyond our ability to comprehend or understand, but God you call us to share. Have us to count our blessings today and to keep our families and our mothers at the top of those blessing lists today and tomorrow and always. We pray through the great compassionate God of his loving Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and for the comforting presence always of the Holy Spirit, in whose name we pray. Amen. <laughs>